I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At seven minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. I'm here and now serving notice on the governor that the state of Colorado does not belong to him, but to the nation. I own a share of stock in Colorado, and the governor or his general chase can shoot me, but I will talk from the grave. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Becky Dinner of the New York Yankees. I'm proud to be a member of a great team, and I'm equally proud of my family, Stormy, my wife, and our two children. They're both healthy, normal kids. But you know, there are some children in this world, in your neighborhood, who are not so lucky. They were born with handicaps, injured in accidents, or disabled by illness. All they want is an equal chance with other children to work, to play, to learn, and to feel they will have a place in the world when they grow up. The Easter Seal Society is preparing both children and adults for tomorrow, rehabilitating them, giving them a chance to become self-respecting citizens. That's why I support the work of Easter Seals. As a member of the National Easter Seal Sports Council, we hope you support your local Easter Seals program. It's a great way to help handicapped people. This is Lorne Green. It is December. 1930. The Great Depression has entered its second year. The people's faces in this Washington, D.C. train station are etched with worry and strain. They huddle down into old overcoats they're making do for yet another winter. Hands deep in pockets, collars turned up against the late afternoon biting wind. About to depart the station is a special car of the Baltimore and Ohio line. It's headed for Illinois, traveling much the same route as the historic funeral train of President Abraham Lincoln. But this train carries a gray metal casket containing the tiny, exhausted body of Mary Harris Jones going to its final resting place. Her friends called her Mother, Her enemies refer to her, among other things, as the most dangerous woman in America. She lived to be 100 years old, her life spanning a time of almost unbelievable change and growth in America. Her funeral train will pass through West Virginia and Pennsylvania, states that knew her well. But it will stop at a martyred miners' cemetery in Mount Olive, Illinois. There, Mother Jones will rest forever. Beyond, west where the sun flees at day's end. They can't hear the whistle of her funeral train. But they'll never forget Mother Jones. This is a grand day. Here in Colorado and everywhere that there are freedom-loving people. Today you have struck a blow for the rights of man. Today the strike has begun. And today is the beginning of an age when men's lives will no longer be calculated by the number of tons of coal produced. Mark this day. We will mark it. For it was today that you rose up and told the company that they do not own you. They may own the houses where you live, the stores where you shop, the schools where your children are taught, even the churches where you pray. But they do not own your will or your soul. And that is why I say that today is a grand day. Mother Jones cut a swath across this country with her stirring speeches, her indomitable spirit, and her unwavering belief in and support of the worker. The tales about her are legion, but perhaps the truest picture of Mary Jones can be seen when she was fighting alongside the striking coal miners in the tent colonies out in Colorado. 
She was 82 years old then. And that's where we'll begin our story. Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Out in Colorado, by Pamela Russell. Our stars, Irene Tedrow and Kent Smith. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little, too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. Sears, 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 where America shops. Hey, look. In here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label, just popping with pride. Because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care. Plus, at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. Your baby's room. Furnish it with the quaintness and charm of Sears Jenny Lynn's crib dresser and chest. Your baby will be secure in our old-fashioned crib built with high sides and a safety drop-side latch. And each handsome maple color piece comes in a non-toxic finish. Sears Jenny Lynn dresser and chest is furniture that will adapt gracefully as baby grows older, too. So visit us soon, because Sears has baby buys bundled up. Available at most Sears retail stores. The coal strike in Colorado began in 1912. It went on for years, and many lives were lost. Its focus was the little town of Trinidad. And that is where the governor of Colorado and Mother Mary Jones had their first encounter, their first battle of wills. It would not be their last. Governor! Governor, you must see us. Let us in or come out to us. We're only a poor group of women and children come to see you, Governor. Mrs. Jones, I must protest this. This hotel is both venerable and respected. You're destroying our reputation with your outrageous behavior and antics. I must ask you to leave the premises. I have come here to speak with the governor. He clearly does not wish to speak with you, Mrs. Jones. Your reputation precedes you. We know all about you here in Trinidad. We've heard all the stories of your adventures with other strikers in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, indeed everywhere. This strike is a deplorable but hopefully temporary condition. The miners will soon come to their senses. Yes, and if they don't, I'm sure that the company hired thugs with their machine guns would be more than happy to convince them of their folly. Exactly. You've mentioned both our reputations, your hotels and mine. I'm as proud of mine as you are of yours. I'm just as venerable as your hotel, young man, though I may not be as respected in some quarters. In other words, you will not leave as I have requested? Exactly. I'll have to have you removed then. <laughs> An old woman being dragged screaming from your establishment. I fear that will only enhance my reputation and further jeopardize yours. Mm. All right, stay here then. The governor will never open that door to you. At least I can scare off those women and children waiting for you in the lobby. Oh, don't depend on that. Those are miners' wives and children. They don't scare easily. Oh, this, this situation is just... Deplorable. Exactly. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, young man. Governor! We won't bite you. We only want to speak with you. Governor! We only want to help you do what you say you've come to do. We want to tell you about the strike conditions. We want to tell you about the death special, that armored car the company uses to patrol the mines and the trenches they've dug, the searchlights and the machine guns. I have with me some children and wives of the miners. 
They can tell you things about this strike that no one else can. Governor! Why, why doesn't someone remove her? She's been at that door for nearly an hour. Our governor, Mother Mary Jones, has a way of circumventing rules and regulations. All authority. And the woman's a menace. The situation is explosive enough without her. She's an instigator. She's capable of sparking the miners to violence with her inflamed rhetoric. She's done it before. Well, I won't have it here in Colorado, not in my state. Governor! Governor, can you hear through your closed door the little babies wailing who are being dragged from the lobby? Their mothers brought them here today in good faith. Brought them for you to see. This will not be forgotten, Governor. I won't have it, I tell you. What do you intend to do, Governor? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have martial law declared. I'm going to have that woman, that Mother Jones, deported from the strike zone. Well, you can deport her, Governor, but I think you should know she'll come back again. And she, again. She wouldn't dare. Oh, she would. And she will. I don't think you really know Mother Jones. I know all of her that I care to. I am the governor of Colorado. I think that still means something. I think I still wield some authority, some power. Damn the tenacity of the woman. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Bud Palmer, inviting you to the Sears Spring Home Appliance Sale. Come celebrate spring and save from $20 to $100 on selected Sears major home appliances. Save big on washers, dryers, ranges, and microwave ovens, refrigerators and dishwashers, sewing machines, vacuum cleaners, color TVs, and stereos. Celebrate spring. Save at Sears now. Sale ends April 28th. Tastes may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available in most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. Solid as Sears. Today's man of action wants slacks that look good, feel comfortable. And at Sears, you'll find great fitting slacks with dash and durability. What really makes it all happen is Fortrell polyester gabardine, woven with two-way stretch that moves with you through a day's worth of action. In popular solid colors a man can feel comfortable with. Any way you look at it, these stretch-woven permapressed slacks hold up handsomely to a hard-driving summer. That's style, sense, and satisfaction at most larger Sears retail stores. Let's try some word association. In. Out. Top. Bottom. Paint. House. What? Oh, the whole house needs painting. Hmm. On. Off. That's it. Sears $4 off paint sale on each gallon of interior fashion flat semi-gloss and ceiling paint, plus exterior flat house paint. I'll uplift my home and my spirits by painting new life inside and out. Hard. Easy. They're one coat paints when used as directed. And now, $4 off. Sale ends April 21st at most Sears retail stores. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. The governor did what he said he'd do. He had Mother Jones arrested and taken away from the strike in Trinidad. Well, Mrs. Jones, we're, uh, we're about there. Denver? Yes, ma'am. And now what? Well, ma'am, my orders uh, was to escort you out of Trinidad and into Denver. My, my job is done. As soon as we arrive, you're free to go. Now, only you must not return to the strike zone. By whose orders? The governor's uh, and General Chase. General Chase? Who's he? Well, he's the commander of the state militia, ma'am. Then martial law has been declared in the strike zone. Yes, ma'am. You're to be arrested on site should you return there. Now, you won't, will you, ma'am? Were you ordered to ask me that? No, ma'am. What do you think I'll do? I'm afraid uh, you're planning on going back. I'm a citizen. I'm not a criminal. I've broken no law, and I have the right to go wherever I please. This is a free country. Yeah, but ma'am, see, would you'd... you arrest me on sight in Trinidad? I would have to. Because you were ordered to? Yes, ma'am. Have you ever questioned your orders? What? Well, that's not a soldier's duty. Well, maybe you should make a beginning. Start now, because your orders are unlawful. That's what this country is all about. Laws. The same laws for everyone. The same for the governor and for you. The same for General Chase and for me. The same for everyone. It was wrong and unlawful to deport me from Trinidad. 
The only reason that it happened is because the governor doesn't like what I have to say, and that's no reason at all. Yeah, we're coming into the station. Uh, would you look at that crowd? I believe those are some friends of mine. I believe I'll go out and talk with them. I want to thank you all for coming out to meet me today. This is a fine welcome to Denver. Though I must admit that it wasn't by choice that I came to your city. I was brought here under military escort. I was forced to leave Trinidad against my will. Ooh. And will you be going back, Mother? Damn right I will. Yay! I'm here and now serving notice on the governor that the state of Colorado does not belong to him, but to the nation. Yay! I own a share of stock in Colorado, and the governor or his general chase can shoot me, but I will talk from the grave. I will return to Trinidad. I will return to Trinidad. Hello, boys. Uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, Mother Jones. Hello there, Mother. Ma'am, what can we do for you? We're not too used to visitors up here in the cab. How'd you find the way? My father was a railroad man. I know trains and the men who run them. <laughs> uh, I uh, came up front to ask you boys a favor. Oh, uh, what is it, Mother? Do you ever make any unscheduled stops? Oh, it's against regulations, ma'am. Why? Well, we're close to Trinidad. I have reason to believe there may be a welcoming committee waiting there for me. A welcoming committee, ma'am? Yes, but none too friendly a one. The militia, if they have word I'm on this train, will be at the station to arrest me. Arrest you? For what, mother? Well, all that I've done is to believe in and try to help the cause of the working man. What I wanted to ask of you boys was if you could stop and let me off just outside Trinidad so I could miss that welcoming committee at the station? Oh, I'm afraid we couldn't do that, ma'am. Oh, no, no, we couldn't. Uh, not unless one of those cows might stray onto the tracks again. Now, they, they have a way of doing that, don't they, Joe? That they do. And uh, it's a pure nuisance, Mother, I can tell you that. Them cows come right up on the tracks, and we have to stop the train and shoo them off. Oh, it's a real nuisance. And, you know, I just have a feeling that one of them cows is going to be doing it this trip. Soon. Maybe ten minutes or so. Oh, I thank you boys for the warning. Yeah, well, I'll be going back to my seat now. Now, if uh, for some reason I should miss seeing you at the Trinidad station, well, I won't be forgetting you. God bless you, Mother. Goodbye, man. Bye, boys. <laughs> They've come for you, Mother. Oh, easy now, easy. Who's come for me? Detectives, infantry, and cavalry. There must be a hundred or more of them squirming outside the hotel, and General Chase himself is with them. They're demanding that you come out and give yourself up. Oh, I hoped I'd have more than three hours here before they discovered me. Well, I guess I better go out. I'll go with no, you. No, 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 I'll go alone. You get back to the tent colony and let them know what's happened. But, Mother... Go on now, I don't want you. Go. Yes, Mother. And I don't want you worrying about me. I'm looking forward to meeting this General Chase. After all, what can he do to an old woman like me? Now take the back way. All right. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. I daydream my way through a hot summer and a slow autumn with no leads and nothing to do. I was catching winks one afternoon when the phone... <laughs> A voice said, Hart, get moving faster, you are dead. Dozens of cons I'd put in the slammer could have made that call, but I couldn't recognize the voice. My name's Hart, Sam Hart. I leaned back in my chair and reached for a bonbon. Figured I must have been dreaming. Then it hit me. Dream or no, that phone call was a warning. I'd been off the street so long that I was getting soft. 
And getting soft could mean curtains for Sam Hart. I saw my doctor and moved into action. Been running laps, hitting the gym every night ever since. And I'm steering clear of the cream puffs. The American Heart Association wants you to know about exercise, diet, and your cardiovascular fitness. Contact your American Heart Association for free information. We're fighting for your life. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. This very room reeks of dejection, despondency, undusted cobweb furnishings, black drapes covering the window. Here, let me throw them back and at least get some moonlight, if not sunlight, into this place. In the doorway. What is it? Uh, Madeline! Am I that horrifying to look upon, dear brother? Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. of her many years as a labor agitator and organizer, Mother Mary Jones was arrested many times. She did not fear arrest, and the threat of it didn't cause her to hesitate for a moment when boarding the Denver train headed into the strike zone. She felt that the striking miners needed her, and where she was needed, she went, and without fear. There she is. Which one of you is General Chase? I am General Chase. So you are. I should have known by all that fancy gold braid. And you are Mrs. Jones? That's right. You will be escorted to the Denver-bound train immediately. No, I will not. I will not have you here. But I am here, and here I'm staying. No, madam. You are going. Now. I refuse. You cannot do that. I just did. You are to be deported. And you will not enter this strike zone again. I have the right to go anywhere I damn well please, General. It pleases me to be here in Trinidad. We shall see how much pleasure you derive from this visit. You're under arrest, Mrs. Jones. Men, take her. Where am I being taken, General? This is a fine army you have here. I suppose you felt you needed all of them to capture and confine an old woman. I am well aware of the uses to which you put your age and your gender, madam. They will gain you no sympathy here or immunity from the laws of this land. What law have I broken? You defied my orders. You are the law, General? Here in Trinidad, I am. Well, then God help this place and all who live here. You're elderly and female. And I know the emotions that arouses in some. But to me, you are nothing but an outlaw. Cunning and dangerous. You refuse to be deported, so you must be locked up. I cannot, however, put you in a jail. Public opinion would be outraged. But, General, you are the law supreme here in Trinidad. Surely you don't care what people think. I, uh, have a place in mind for you, Mrs. Jones. A grave, perhaps? <laughs> that, Mrs. Jones, would be too good to be true. But this place is a kind of a grave. As close as I can come to it for now, anyway. Men, take her. I've brought your tray, Mrs. Jones. I've no appetite, sister. I've had none since they brought me to this prison. This is a hospital, Mrs. Jones, and you know it. I am not sick. I am a prisoner. Perhaps you sisters care for the sick here, but for me, it is a prison. Perhaps you don't know that you're being used, sister, by General Chase. Used for a most evil purpose. He's not a good man, and neither is his intentions. Do you know that? 
I don't see it as you do, Mrs. Jones. No, of course you wouldn't, sister. Rarely does the jailer share the point of view of his prisoner. You're not my prisoner. Then I'm free to leave here? No. Then, sister, I am someone's prisoner. I did not choose to come here, and I have no wish to remain. I will leave your tray. Well, you might as well take it as you go. I'll not be touching it. Mrs. Jones. Yes? I've heard that you're a Catholic. I am? I thought that perhaps maybe... Sister, th if you're going to offer me spiritual solace, I must tell you that religious matters are far from my mind at the moment. I see. Truth to tell, religion has not been much a part of my life for a very long time. Would you believe that I once taught in a convent, sister? You did? You're surprised? Well, I had no idea you were a teacher. Well, I've been many things. I, I not only taught, but I learned a great deal in the convent. Did you, Mrs. Jones? Indeed, sister. I learned a hatred for injustice and a vast inquisitiveness. I will pray for you, Mrs. Jones. Yes, I'm sure you will, sister. I have no wish to offend you, but I will tell you something that I live by. Pray for the dead and fight like hell for the living. Oh, Mrs. Jones, why don't you use your many talents for something higher than agitating? Sister, Jesus Christ was an agitator. I can aim no higher than that. I'll leave the tray. How long have they been down there? About two hours, sir. There are 60 or so of them. Some have children with them. They don't appear to be armed. Some are carrying signs. Signs? What do the signs say? God bless Mother Mary, uh, we're for Mother Jones, that kind of thing. I don't want them outside my headquarters. Sir, there's talk that they're planning to march down the main street of town. I think that we will intercept them. Sir? Intercept. You understand the word? Yes, sir. Two units of cavalry should do it nicely, I would think. But, uh, sir... Yes? They're unarmed. Uh, women and children. So you said. But I'm not so sure. If I may suggest, sir, just look out your window and you can see for yourself. Allow me, sir. Looks like a dangerous and potentially riotous mob. You remember, I trust, how to handle a mob, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. I want them dispersed. No matter what the consequences. Fashion speaks on gossamer wings Through dresses and skirt sets and wonderful things Filmy clouds of prints in a palette of colors That sheer dressing from Sears For sheer drama, you'll love the way light flitters Back and forth through fabric you'll hardly believe Is easy care polyester Making each dress a sheer pleasure to care for In Mrs. Half Sizes, Mrs. Petite and Junior Sizes At most larger Sears retail stores Sheer dressing from Sears I'm out of control. Be cool, be natural, take it light. But where do I start? With the basics like the new Pretty Natural Light Shaper from Sears. The Pretty Natural Light helps keep you smooth all day under your clothes, giving you a shape that's soft and natural thanks to the shimmery lightweight power net. Never intimidates because its control is moderate with a front panel that helps keep your tummy where you want it. Great! I'll ease into control with a Pretty Natural Light. It's new at larger Sears retail stores. Hey, look, in here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label, just popping with pride. Because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care. Plus, at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. Lorne?
Lorne Green again. And here's the concluding act of Out in Colorado. Mrs. Jones. Yes? What was that you were reading? I've been completely isolated for nine weeks here. No letters, no newspapers. What do you think it could have been, sister? It looked like a clipping from an old newspaper. Well, you have very sharp eyes. That's exactly what it is. I had it with me when I was arrested. I carry it with me always. I have for a very long time. Would you like to see it? I don't think there's any need of that. Yes, I think you should see it, sister. Here, take it, look at it. No, no, I... well, I'll tell you, then. There's no need, Mrs. Jones. Yes, I think that there is. Have you ever heard of a woman named Fanny Sellens? No. She was a labor organizer and agitator like myself. This is, as you guessed, a clipping, a newspaper photograph of her dead body. She was killed during a strike years ago. Killed? Yes. And there was a strike in Pennsylvania. Some gunmen shot down one of the picketing miners. Fanny was trying to shield some children from the sight of the dead man. They opened fire again and killed her, too. And that is what you are refusing to look at, sister. A picture of those children that she was trying to protect, standing in a circle, staring down at the fallen Fanny Sellens. May I see it now, Mrs. Jones? Yes. I came to tell you, Mrs. Jones, that the soldiers are going to take you to Denver to see the governor today. I believe you'll be released, and you'll not be returning here. They've told us we can move other patients into this room. I was never one of your patients, sister. Here's your picture. Thank you. Mrs. Jones. Yes, sister. I want to tell you this. From the time that you first came here, I believed that you were wrong... Misguided in your thinking and your actions, but... Mrs. Jones, I've changed my mind about you. And you were right about the general. Why do you say that now, sister? What happened? Well, you've been without news from the outside, but you'll hear soon enough what has been done. I don't want you to think that I or any of the sisters condone or approve. What did they do? Some women marched in protest of your arrest and confinement. And? And they were ridden down in the streets... By the militia. How many were killed? Well, no one was killed, but some of the women and their children were injured. Thank you for telling me, sister. We strongly condemn this kind of violence. We've made our position clear to the general, and we have his assurance that it was an unfortunate occurrence that will not be repeated. If you believe that, sister, then your condemnations are worth nothing. A man like the general finds his strength in good people's belief in his lies. It will happen again. The only difference is that next time the violence will probably bring death. Perhaps you should look again at Fanny Sellens, sister. I think that picture only keeps alive your anger and hatred and, and your pain, Mrs. Jones. No, sister. I have no need of an old photograph for that. Those things live within me. Every day there are violent and cruel injustices that nourish them. You are a woman of great anger, Mrs. Jones. You are a woman of great faith, sister. I will pray that both of us sustain our strengths. They're very different as we are. But I am beginning to see that both have their uses. Goodbye, Mrs. Jones. Goodbye, sister. Mrs. Jones, I've asked you here today... Excuse me, Governor, for interrupting, but I was not asked here today. I was brought here under military guard. You were asked here today, Mrs. Jones, so that I might speak with you. And I can see that you're not hearing me any more today than you did when I was shouting through a hotel door to you. I uh, heard you then, and I hear you now. All right, Governor. What is it that you have to say to me? 
I will try to give you the same sort of attention that you have given me. Mrs. Jones, you are never again to return to the strike zone. I would ban you from all of Colorado if it were possible, and I sincerely hope that your stay in Denver will be a short one. But unfortunately, I cannot dictate that. No? No. You haven't yet crowned yourself king of Colorado. Exiles are still beyond you. Oh, take heart, Governor. I'm sure that soon you will seize and possess all the powers of a despot. I'm warning you, Mrs. Jones, if you attempt to set foot in Trinidad or any other part of the strike zone, you will regret it deeply. I consider myself warned. May I go now? Yes, by all means, go. Randall? Yes, sir. Uh, come in. Close the door. Is she being followed? Mrs. Jones, sir? Uh, yes, of course, Mrs. Jones. Yes, sir. She's being followed by a company detective. Good. I don't think, however, it will be necessary. I have a feeling that we put a scare into Mother Jones this time. I'm sure she'll be leaving Colorado. I wouldn't be surprised if she got on a train this very day. Albert! Albert! Let me uh, help you up there, ma'am. Oh, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you're, you. You're more than welcome, ma'am. Albert! Train now departing for Walsenburg, Ludlow, and Trinidad. All aboard! Walsenburg, next stop. Walsenburg! Ma'am? Yes? Are you uh, Mrs. Mary Jones? I think that you know that I am. What is it that you want? You're under arrest. Mrs. Jones, we'll be getting off the train at Walsenburg. You're mistaken. I'm going to Trinidad. No, Mrs. Jones. Walsenburg is your last stop. Walsenburg! All out for Walsenburg! Mrs. Jones, will you come with me? Do I have a choice? No. Well, then let's go. Ah, my old friends, the militia, come to meet me. I should have guessed. Where am I being taken? You'll find out soon enough. Dearest friend, it is futile, I know, writing this letter when I'm certain that you will never see it, but it helps me somehow to think that I am communicating with you. Possibly only you could understand what I have done. I do not know if you or anyone knows where I am. It was my intention to return to Trinidad, but I was taken off the train at a place called Walsenburg. I was met by a company of militia and marched here to this cellar. I was warned, but I refused to take heed of the tyrant's warning. I have broken no law. I have not been charged. I've had no trial and no bond has been set. I am being held incommunicado in this underground cell, surrounded by sewer rats, tin horn soldiers, and other vermin. The rats come across the stone floor at me in the night. I can hear their approach, the scratching of their claws as they run toward me. I fight them off with a broken beer bottle. I have been here by my calculations nearly 20 days, but uh, I'm afraid that I might have lost a day or two. The hours drag past. Day is perpetual twilight, and night is deep night. I watch the people's feet from my cellar window. There are miners' feet in old shoes, Soldiers' feet well shoed in government leather. The shoes of women with the heels run down. The dilapidated shoes of children and barefoot boys. The children sometimes scrooch down and wave to me, but the soldiers shoe them off. 
This is a horrible place. Cold and dark. Shut off from all sunlight. But I will not buckle under to them. I will not run. I see my duty. I will try to do it. I am needed. What do you want? That? Who smuggles their paper and pencils to you? Oh, they just appear. Perhaps I have a good fairy. Why do you even bother? You know how it'll end. I have my orders. No letter of yours will ever reach the outside. My good fairy and I believe otherwise. Besides, I'm waiting for the day when you disobey your orders, soldier. Yeah, you've waited a long time for that. Well, it'll be worth it. Anyway, I've nothing better to do. From what I hear, you're going to rot here. When you reach my age, soldier, rotting is neither far away nor frightening anymore. Good afternoon, Mrs. Jones. Is it really afternoon? Huh? It's difficult to know here in this hole. I have word for you from the general. Am I to be drawn and quartered at dawn? You're to be released today, right now. I will arrange an escort for you. Escort or guard? Escort, ma'am. Have I choice in the matter? Yes, of course. Well, then I choose to leave here alone without your escort, Lieutenant. Goodbye, soldier. Which one of us do you think will rot here now? You'd better desert or at least disobey very soon. Mrs. Jones. You don't have to tell me, Mrs. Jones. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. But where are you planning on going now? Are you asking for your general or for yourself? Myself. Well, I'm sure I don't know why, but I believe you. I'm leaving Colorado. I'm glad of that, Mrs. Jones. I'm not surprised. I meant for you. No, no, don't be too glad. I'll be back. But right now, I can do more good in Washington. That's where I'm headed. I'm going to testify before the House Mines and Mining Committee... Someone must tell them, make them see what is really going on in Colorado. The governor is there testifying. So is John D. Rockefeller, Jr. Then I know for sure that I'm needed there for the truth. Yeah, I'm... I, I'm not trying to threaten or frighten you, Mrs. Jones, but please, stay in Washington. Don't come back to Colorado. Well, I'm not frightened, but you seem to be. I am. Of what? I'm afraid of what I've done and... and what I'm going to do. You can't undo what you've already done, Lieutenant. But you can stop now. No, I don't think that I can stop. I... I... Lieutenant! Sir? The General wants you. All right, I'm on my way. Mrs. Jones, you didn't want an escort, so... I'll say goodbye to you. Lieutenant... Thank you for the pencils and paper. How did you know it was me? I didn't until right now. You're welcome, Mrs. Jones. You can stop, Lieutenant. You can stop now. No, I can't. I, I'm afraid... I'm afraid. It's orders. I can't stop unless they tell me to, Mrs. Jones. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lieutenant. I'll be back. I'll be back out in Colorado. While Mother Mary Jones was testifying in Washington, the Ludlow Massacre took place in Colorado. The state militia looted and then burned to the ground a striking miners' tent colony. Two young mothers and their 11 children were trapped and burned to death in the tents. The youngest of the children was three months old. The strike was lost. In the beginning, there were many such cruel and devastating defeats, but they paved the way for the eventual victory. It was a long and hard struggle, and Mother Mary Jones fought it until her death at the age of 100, some 20 years after her valiant days out in Colorado. Mr. 
like a cord for spring. With Baby Cord Fashions from Sears Junior Bazaar. Baby cords aren't for babies, but for juniors with an eye for style in textured jackets, straight skirts, trouser pants. Stripes of blue and white that are really narrowed down. That's Baby Cord. To complete your outfit, pop on pretty little blouses, also from Junior Bazaar. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, get the full power of the maintenance-free Sears 48 battery for a full $7 off its regular low price. The Sears 48. On sale now, just $42.99 with trade-in. And get great savings on Sears best-selling belted tire, the Dynaglass Belted 25. Now save $14 to $28 on sets of four at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop. This year, my mom is dressing me up in pretty things from the Sunny Bunch collection at Sears. That's right. She'll look fresh and feminine in these dresses and separates. I can choose from frilly, colorful dresses, bouncy skirts, pants, and just the right coordinating tops. Sizes 7 to 14 in easy care fabric that's machine washable. Whether I'm going to a birthday party or just school, my Sunny Bunch clothes make me feel special. You are special. Thanks, Mom. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Out in Colorado was written by Pamela Russell, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were Irene Tedro and Kent Smith. Also heard were John Shea, William Woodson, William Lally, Jack Edwards, Tom Holland, Tyler McVeigh, Lenore Kingston, Sam Edwards, Robert Easton. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. This is Mel Blank, and voices are my business. In Warner Brother cartoons, you probably know me as the crazy little character... Daffy Duck! <laughs> or... Uh, Porky Pig! Or... Me, Bugs Bunny Duck! We all have a voice in matters that affect us in our community, and it's necessary to speak out to get the best possible community services. One community tradition which really deserves vocal support is the library. The library has been serving up all kinds of information ever since this country began. After all, you can get thousands of voices in the library's books on film, records, and tapes, and you can borrow these voices freely. But the library can't give you such good service without a lot of vocal and personal support from you. This means you need to write or call your community officials and speak up for the library. It's all the the air folks. That library. A public service message from the American Library Association and this station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Each year, medical quackery takes many dollars from unsuspecting people, as well as endangering the health of innocent victims. Watch out for the telltale signs. There are several different types of quackery to look out for. For example, false claims for drugs, food fads, and unnecessary food supplements, as well as fake medical devices. Remember that their promoters are much more interested in making money than in preserving health. Quackery and drugs include so-called cures for arthritis, rheumatism, baldness, and pills that supposedly melt away fat. Drug quackery can be very dangerous in that the victim is sometimes kept from seeing a doctor and obtaining life-saving treatment. The food quack attempts to convince the dieter that vitamin supplements are the only way to a thinner body. And once again, only a doctor should diagnose a vitamin deficiency and write up the necessary prescription. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Let's listen. The movies. Man, that's where this country's headed. <laughs> and anybody from Europe with a name like Valentino or Chevalier is going to clean up. I think we better look into this year's cinema a little further.
So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.